All right, folks. This is my last try at making this video. I don't know how you guys do it. I'm gonna give you my first impressions of this bike. Some things that have not been presented in other videos um, that I found somewhat interesting or annoying or whatever. The first thing I noticed was that when I warmed up this bike, the rivets right here started oozing out something. It looked like rust. I got a photo of it. This is how high tech I am. Can you see that? Oh, crap. I don't know if you can see that. But it looked like rust. So what I did was I wiped it off. It wouldn't come off very well. So then I had to use like a rubbing compound, a polishing compound to get that off. I don't know. I found that annoying. I've had other bikes and that's never happened. Anything like that at least. This is a handle, I think, right here. This is metal, like a metal bar. Something to grip. So I was surprised about that. It's a plus and a minus in that it is something to grip, but it's not a very good type of handle. You have to do a, like an underhand grip. Um, but it is there. Uh, the other thing <clears throat> is that the dealership that I bought this bike at installed this battery tender lead and then charged me 10 bucks for it um it's more of a comment on the dealer i don't i didn't necessarily like want it and i'm gonna have to order a different one because my charger is not that type so just a i don't know quick blurb on the dealership i'm fortunate enough to have two dealerships two aprilia dealerships very close to me one's 20 minutes away one's like 30 minutes away uh, in opposite directions, so I'll probably go to the other dealership to get um, service done on this bike. Uh, <clears throat> this has been mentioned before, but these vents are fake. Um, let me see if I can get this light in there. They're blocked off. They're blocked off, all three of them, with plastic. And then there's the radiator. So all the heat, all the heat comes from the radiator and just kind of billows up here and then into your uh, legs, your calves, whatnot. Anyway, it's not a big deal. It's just hot. Um, I have more of a, an issue with the fact that they put plastic there. Only in that there's a review or interview of the... Um, Designer, he had talked about how they went with a plastic cap to save weight. The metal one would, you know, add ounces or something to that effect, or grams. But yet they go ahead and put plastic there. Um, to me, that's kind of like contradictory. The other thing that goes along with this theme, these vents, which I thought were vents, they're blocked off with plastic. That was actually a cool feature that I thought about the bike prior to owning it that I was like, oh, that's really cool that there's air vents there because he talked about the air box being up here or higher up here. So that would have been a cool little feature. I hate fake things on anything, especially vehicles and, and um, motorcycles and whatnot. And the designer even talked about having um, form, fall, function, whatnot. And uh, I don't know, to me, that's kind of counter that. The other thing that I found annoying was that this turn signal light right here vibrates more than that one. So I checked the torque on the bolt and it's the same, it's tight, but this for whatever reason vibrates more than the other one. I found that annoying. The air box it's supposed to be in this area, right? If you guys have seen those same videos that I watch, all the journalists that went to Sardinia talked about the air box being nice and high, easily accessible. But this is the thing they didn't mention. In the manual, on page what, 248, this is what it states. The air filter may only be changed and or checked and changed by an Aprilia 
authorize Aprilia dealer. That's so not cool. Anyways, it's just one of those things that you don't realize until you look at the, the owner's manual. And I don't know if that's going to void the warranty if you decide to do it yourself. But, um, I don't know, it's one of those things that, that's not that cool. The other thing, the manual itself is extremely small. I don't know if that's a complaint or not, but it's really difficult to read. Um, let me go around to this side. The other thing on this particular bike, I don't know why this is the case, but I think there's supposed to be a, uh, a decal right here, and it's missing with their, with their saying, whatever that is. It's like, born to race or be ready to race. Wake up and be ready to race or something like that, or your racer. But it's not there. I kind of would like it there. Um, this sight glass for the brake reservoir, I believe, is not glass. It's actually plastic. And it's annoying because whomever, I don't know, built this bike up or whatever, they, like, rubbed it. And in rubbing it, it left enough, you know, micro scratches or whatever that you, it's very difficult to see the fluid in that glass because of that feature. I have to just look at it under certain light conditions, I suppose, and actually see what the level is at. Um, so that's another feature I don't particularly like about this bike. Um, let me go around to this part. So probably the biggest thing that I found annoying, which is what caused me to uh, to want to actually say something online, is that <clears throat> when I first started riding it, from from the very moment, and then you know subsequent rides after that, this this angle, this line right here, did not match up perfectly parallel to this line right here. And you can only really tell when you're riding the bike. And originally I thought that it was because of this clutch cable. It was kind of throwing me off a little bit. And so basically what it seemed like, it, it seemed like this. When you're going straight, it seemed crooked. And that really bothered me. So then, <clears throat> originally I thought maybe it was something to do with the frame or whatever. But then I looked at this gap right here. This gap was smaller than this gap. And what that did was, it made me realize that this whole dash assembly was slightly crooked, crooked this way. So then I looked around and figured out that it was attached at different points. And so what I did was I loosened these screws right here, here, and this side, right here. And then you loosen up, there's three screws that hold that uh, reservoir, a radiator reservoir, take those out. And then there's two more screws or bolts, I should say, yeah. Two here and then two on the other side that you just loosen. And when you do that, you can shift this whole dash assembly front fascia or whatever it is, ever so slight, and I shifted it this way, and those gaps are now equal, and that's more or less straight and parallel. I don't know if anyone else notices things like that, but I do, and it really bothered me. It's kind of difficult to notice because you, you have to kind of look down as you're going straight, and uh, you know obviously you're, you're on the road, so it's not super safe, but it is. It was crooked, so I found that annoying. Um, the other thing, is that the clutch lever reach is not adjustable. So the brake, front brake lever reach is adjustable. That's great. There's, I think, four adjustments, reach adjustments. That's great, but then this side is not. You can adjust whatever the bite point, but you can't adjust the reach. I find that extremely annoying because they're both at different, I don't know, your left hand is different than your right hand. 
I do a lot of mountain biking and that's one of my pet peeves. And so, I don't know, I find that annoying. It also gives you a false sense of where that angle is when you're, when you're riding it. They almost feel like they're at different angles um, because the reach is different. So that's one of those things that I would have liked them to have offered that ability or at least put that feature in the, the clutch side. Uh, generally, the bike looks way better in person than in photos and in videos. It's just the way that the bike stands and the, the structure of it, the size of it, it is bigger than I think uh, people realize or what I realize is a lot taller and bigger in terms of this area. So it, it holds itself well in person way better, way better than in videos and photos. Um, the other thing, the seat height, so I'm like 5'8", uh, 30, 31 inseam, and I am on my tippy toes with regular shoes. Um, so I'll probably get the, the comfort low seat, and, um, and then that'll, that'll help that situation out. It's not, it's not like a crazy, you know, I can't put my feet down kind of thing, but it is uh, something I would like a little bit more um, stability with. Uh, this is another big thing I didn't mention is that this is the bill of sale right there. The commodity surcharge of $200 MSRP 12599 So that was explained to me that it was a manufacturer pass through. So basically Aprilia you know, increased the value of this bike or the cost of this bike by $200 and didn't want to change the MSRP that's been published and reported upon. So they're just passing that cost on to the, uh, to the buyer. Now, I don't know if that's the dealership that's telling me this and it's just their way of getting $200 or that's truly the case, but that's something that people should be aware of. All these uh, review videos and comparisons against the T7 and they talk about the value of this bike because you get all this other stuff. Um, but when you're looking at out the door type cost uh that's something you have to compare against the t7 and i don't know if the t7 is 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 really just two grand less or this bike is really just two grand more or whatever it is but that's a factor if you're comparing the two bikes um that's not that's not mentioned anywhere really um with all that being said i do like the bike i mean i think anybody who spends as much money on anything like this you're gonna just um you know be predisposed to say it's great and it, you like it. Um, people talk about how great the bike sounds. Uh, that's another thing I don't, I'm not really like that impressed by. It sounds great. It sounds good. It sounds like a, you know, like a motorcycle, but there's way better sounding bikes out there. Um, I'm assuming that other adventure bikes of this class don't, they don't sound that good. And therefore this sounds that much better, but if you're just, you know, talking about how good a bike sounds, there's other bikes that sound way better. It's, but again, it's not even a factor really for me. And maybe it is for you, but um, that's one thing I noticed. I wasn't that impressed by the sound. Everybody was talking about the sound. Um, man, I think that's pretty much it. Like I said, this is like, I don't know how many takes. Um, Comment if you want. I don't, know, I don't care if you subscribe. I don't really think I'm going to grow this channel that much. But if you have questions, I'll answer them. If you're wanting to know how good the bike rides or anything like that, it's, I don't know. It's all relative, right? So I'll give you my impression, but my experience is totally different than yours. I do like the bike. I'm glad I got it. I think it's going to increase in value in the sense of when it's being compared to the T7. Everyone's going to say this bike is actually better, this, that, and the other, and the, the bike will be just as um, in demand as the T7 is now. So I'm glad about that aspect of it. I'm glad that it's super somewhat unique and you don't see these are out uh, that much. You don't see the T7 that, out that much either, but yeah, you rarely see this bike out. Um, you know, oh, let me talk about accessories um, or the, like what, what I'm thinking about getting. Uh, I'll get the center sand because I think that's necessary. Everything else, I'm, I'm not sure. I talked about the, the lower seat. 
I'm not sure if I will get the heated grips. People talk about having heated grips and that's awesome and all that. Uh, I've never had heat grips on my bikes, but I haven't done that much adventure riding, so um, I may get that. Uh, bash guard, people talk about how flimsy the bash guard is um, because of the fact that it's not, I guess, attached here. That, but again, I think it's, it's fine. Um, there's probably better looking gash, bash guards, but I'm not going to do anything until I feel it's necessary. A lot of this stuff is really expensive too. When you start adding these things up, it's like crazy expensive. So, um, no, that's pretty much it. I'll try to put another video up if I have something worthwhile to say. But if you have questions, feel free to ask them on the comments. I'll try to answer those. All right. There you go.